What is up, everyone? This is the villain Marty Skell, and you are listening to Chillin' with the villain, the best wrestling content out there. That might be quite the statement, but you know what? I'm sticking to it. Uh, if you listened to last week's episode, you heard part one of our interview with former WWE superstar Carlisto, now known as Samurai Del Sol. And if you haven't listened to that yet, please go back and listen because it was a very interesting conversation, very deep. Um, he was very open and free with his time. And I thought yeah. it was an excellent interview, such a good interview that we decided to make it a two-parter. We could just not get enough of Kalisto in one episode. Uh, so today's episode will be part two of that interview with Kalisto. Um, Sam, how would you rank Kalisto on, in terms of uh, guests that we've had on the show? Or is that not fair to say until after part two has been played? Well, from part one, it's looking very good. He hasn't said anything to upset me, so he's, he's pretty high up there. You'll have to keep listening to find out if he does a faux pas and goes right to the bottom of the list. But he's a very, very cool guy, so the chances of that are incredibly low. But yeah, wow. people seem to be enjoying our like shorter episode. Been trying from the AEW Dynasty one a couple of weeks ago to go for like aim for like a 45 minute, like under an hour one. It seems to be well received. So, and um, Kalisa just talked so well and for so long, we didn't want to dare like cut any of that up. So I think the two-parter is a pretty good idea. Well, we could have done a 10-parter, if we're honest. We could have spoken yeah, all night, do you know <laughs> what I mean? But, you know, there's a, again, as we discussed a few weeks ago, like there's a, you can only have so much of a good thing. So, right. yeah, but listen, um, right now it, we're rambling we? on, so I don't want to waste any more time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, here's part two of our interview with Samurai Del Sol. How did you... Um, so you're wrestling like on the indies, like I said, you wrestled me. I, you know, I saw clips of you doing stuff like a PWG, Drangate USA, Evolve, all this stuff. Who's the person that approaches you to uh, join the WWE? And also, again, another two-part question. Mm. Typically, WWE, at least when I was watching as a child and, and believe yourself, you know, it's kind of the land of giants and just such big yeah. guys. And me, I'm not a big guy, so I always kind of thought like, oh, I don't know if this is going to be possible for someone like me to to go to WWE, even though you know it was definitely a goal. Like when you were growing up, is it something that you that you dreamed of and wanted to do? And then later on, how did it come about? You know, to become a reality. Well, I mean, dude, ever since I was a kid, I my grandma it was because of my grandma. She mm -hmm. we were in Mexico at the time when I was living in Mexico. Um, she always watched Lucha Libre on TV. And, um, dude, it's just from there, me seeing the ring and, like, also, too, because uh, I was going back and forth from Mexico and then to Chicago. And then first time, too, seeing Undertaker versus Yokozuna. Dude, I saw the ring. I'm like, man, something in me just told me, like, man, I'm just going to be there. I don't know. I can't <laughs> understand. I can't explain it, but something in me just, like, you're going to do this one day. I don't know. And uh, throughout time, I guess, after high school, because, dude, I, I had no no family connections, no friends, no nobody would help me. No, I didn't know anybody that does wrestling or like That's wrestling. unusual for a luchador. Typically, luchadors are born into the wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Man. But, dude, I, had, I didn't know anybody. I just knew my grandma liked wrestling. So because of her, <laughs> I started watching Lucha Libre in Mexico. And then when I went to Chicago, I'm like, let me see if there's wrestling in, in the States. Then I found WWF at the time. And I'm like, whoa, this is a different world. And what uh, the... dude, my love from there started. Yeah. From what age? You should be young or? Oh, man. Five, yeah. six years old. Nice. Yeah. And the, the luchadors years. that you were watching when you were a kid, who, like, which luchadors kind of stuck out to you at that age? It is so weird because this is a story. Uh, you know, Octagon, right? Yeah. Octagon in Mexico. Uh, that was my first mask too. Why? Because yeah. I love Ninja Turtles and they have this little tail. And I was <laughs> like, all right, cool. Like, yeah, yeah, this and that. So I went, I always wanted to be a ninja. And uh, <laughs> my very, very first mask, my very first mask was Octagon. And yes. I always told my grandma, man, grandma, like one day I'm going to be Octagon Junior. Watch. watch. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> and uh, dude, 
And it's so weird because I, I became Octagon Jr. And ever since then, I mean, my grandma passed away in 95. But uh, her dream is to, she's always telling me, like, I want to see you wrestle. Uh, she said as Octagon Jr. at the time. But I want to see you wrestle at, at um, Arena Coliseo. CMLL, where, where she went to go see, always see Lucha. At the time, they didn't let me go because I was too young. I don't know why. <laughs> right, I, was, yeah. I don't know. Was but, uh, but I always wanted to go. My grandma promised me she was going to take me. And uh, But instead, like, and I wrestled over there with uh, Consejo. Hmm. And uh, that, dude, it was a cool emotional moment, man, because uh, I, I remember, like, my grandma telling me that she used to sneak her sandwiches in her purse and see like <laughs> screaming, screaming at the guy, like, Go ahead, man, mess them up, mess them up. I'm like, you know, in Spanish. But uh, dude, it was a great, it was just a great experience, you know. Uh, That's amazing to me, it's just like a uh, special moment. Sorry, I, I kind of trail off and everybody. <laughs> no, no, well, no, I just interested because you know I'm I've been wrestling in Mexico a lot more the last couple of years, so I'm really yeah. trying to like you know. Uh, understand lucha libre history and stuff a lot more like i'm so into yeah. american wrestling and british wrestling and japanese wrestling but like lucha libre i'm still not you know uh, as wise um mm -hmm. i guess that was my other part of the question um yeah, yeah. Who, who approached you to go to w was it triple h or was it kind of before him uh it was well actually i had my first tryout in uh when i had my first tryout i approached uh, Triple H after my trials. Oh, really? And uh, yeah, and yeah, just uh, pretty much my email and everything had my information. Uh, from there, do it because at the trial, I didn't even expect it. That uh, they they just reached out to me. Yes. Uh, office, I guess at the time, mm -hmm. and that was actually before right about quitting. I was about to retire. I had a huge accident back in 2011. Uh, did a double backflip, dude. I don't know, man. I always have accidents, but uh, well, a double anyways, backflip, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, dude. And uh, I just landed on the floor, let's just say. And uh, is there footage of yeah. that? Yeah, there is footage of that. I don't want to see it, but oh my, that's God. actually what made me popular in Mexico. <laughs> I think oh, I may have seen. I feel like I may have seen it. I you think know? you have. Yeah, I'm sure you have. That sounds awful. That was, yeah, I know. I was about to retire, and then WWE called me for a tryout, so that wow. kept me going, man. And because uh, I, I was a special ed teacher on the side, and I I lost my job, of course, you know, because I was injured for a while. Right. So from there, since uh, I just continued with wrestling, and I got hired like two years, less than two years later. Wow. From there, and um, they called me back again for a tryout. Um, a three-day tryout in Tampa. I did the temp, uh, the FCW in Tampa. Who was that your I tryout? Did. Yeah. So who who else was there? Um, can you remember? Uh, Bull Dempsey. Bull Dempsey. James. Yeah. Yeah. Bull James. Yes. Bull James. Bull James was there. I did my trial with him too. The first one. Nice. Uh, I'm trying to remember who else was there. I know. I know Woods was there. Uh, running the tryout. Uh, we oh, were doing Xavier Woods, yeah, dude. We were doing a push up challenge, I remember so well because everybody was giving, giving up, and then at the end, it was just me and Woods, me and Woods <laughs> doing the push up challenge. He's like, nah, nah, and at the end, he's like, yeah, if I would have done two more, I would have beat him because like he just kept going, <laughs> kept going. But I thought it was pretty cool. He's like, man, he, I can't let you lose, yeah, he's like a bench win. press, he's like a bench press champion or something. Oh, yeah, dude, but I almost had him though. I almost had him. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. So, like before you, I guess obviously most notably or most famously, Rey Mysterio, probably like the most famous luchador in uh, WWE, and obviously there was other guys and Eddie Guerrero, I guess. But talking like Mask to uh, luchador, obviously Rey Mysterio. Did yeah. you? And then when you came in, it felt like a lot of people. I don't know if WWE said this or if WWE said this to you, but people were kind of label you the same or like even build you as like oh this is going to be the next Rey Mysterio um did yeah. WWE ever say that to you or is that ever implied and like how did you feel about having that kind of on you uh I've never heard it from a directly directly at me yes uh, I mean I've heard rumors about it but I didn't really pay attention to it I was just oh. focused on the work to be honest uh I started hearing those rumors afterwards so uh, um I don't know. I just I, I didn't know they wanted me to make me like a Rey Mysterio, but 
at the same time uh, when I first started, they they were gonna make me Sin Cara. Oh and, really? Uh, yeah, they were gonna make me Sin Cara at first. So oh, wow, I'm like, oh, they're okay, cool, and I'm already thinking like, man, how can I change the the look? How can I change it just to be me? You know, I'm like, oh, so Sin Cara had already been a wrestler. You mean? Mystico yeah, yeah, had done it. Yeah, yeah, Mystico. So as the, when I first got there, uh, they wanted a at first, well, they wanted a they wanted to get the Samurai Do Soul gimmick. And they wanted to buy it hmm. from me. And um, I said no. So <laughs> okay, I, we came up with the uh, same look. I just took the eyes and the mouth. Uh, just added a couple of things. But uh, yeah, dude, it was it was just one of those things that you know I, I, I'm turning off. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you're good. Well, I was just saying about um, Ray Mysterio because I just felt like you know yeah. that's obviously a big weight to put on someone because obviously we know there's only. I know you've worked with Ray and you know him and uh, I've been very fortunate too as well. And there's obviously only one Ray Mysterio, but like, I just wondered if you came in, like if it was very much like, okay, you're going to start at the bottom and climb up or did you come in and they were like blowing you up and you're thinking, damn, I'm going to be the next WWE champion. Or how was that? Oh uh, man. Like I wasn't really told much, man, to be honest. No. Uh, okay. Uh, Cause I was, I was with Sinkara at the time, Lucha Dragons and we pitched here and there and then he got hurt. So that's how, how things started happening. You know, um, story wise. Yes, I did pitch here and there, but it was just, dif it was difficult. It was different at the time. It was very difficult to, uh, pitch a couple storylines here and there, but again, it was just different times, man. Um, sure. it was, I don't know. Um, did they ever tell you what they wanted like, from you? Did they tell you what they what you wanted your character to be or anything or what they wanted to no. see from you? No, you just like no. go out there and do it. Really? Yeah, I mean, like we have our ideas and uh, we pitch it in like whatever it is. But like for example, uh, uh, when Lince came in and and uh, Grand Metallic came in, uh, they were working by themselves. Yes, and then all of a sudden we didn't have work. Um, just like everybody else, I mean, there, there's. I mean, there's so much talent there, mm. but uh, I understand, you know, when they use and don't use some people. So when they were not using us, so I'm like, all right, cool. I just have an idea, like how to uh, how to make us a group. I just don't know the name. So Lin said it was like, well, with your house party, man. I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> we'll make it work, man. You know, let's just go to Vince's office and uh, throw the most uh, most thing we can do, like crazy oh. things we can think of like so you guys uh, suggested like, like, Luke Charles party. yeah more noise maker matracas everything mean like the most party stuff ever dog <laughs> so, so like, all right cool he's like man that's some good shit like, like oh okay all right me. and i popped i'm like oh but he actually said that that's so cool vince so, liked uh, it uh, yeah so i'm like all right cool and then the following week that's when we wrestled on raw and so like here and there when things happen you know you just have to choose your moments you know I heard, that, like, and, stuff. Yeah, I heard that Lince, yeah, I heard that Lince Dorado had like a different idea for Lucha House Party at the start, like a more serious or darker tone. Is that a thing? Like, is that true? Like with like with the suits and being like serious, like as opposed to like what it came to be. Uh, man, I can't recall. But, uh, <laughs> oh, fair I enough. Just remember, I just remember us trying to have fun, man. To be honest, we right. were just pitching who we can feud with and uh, how we can better everything, you know, how we can better the match, how we can better whoever we're feeding with or our team. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, like, again, I think like sometimes they used us, sometimes they didn't. I feel like right. most people just assumed, like, I'm actually quite surprised that you said that you guys suggested it. Cause I think right. most people just assumed WD like, okay, let's put the free luchadors together. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're saying that wasn't <laughs> the case. No, nah, no, nah, we just wanted it to work, man. You know, we just wanted to have fun. And the dude, we, we got on Raw the following week. And uh, and we were having fun. Dude, <laughs> that was the most fun I've ever had. You know, that's the... Really? I'm glad, I'm glad Lucha House Party happened because to yeah. me, that, that brought me out of the, my own box too, you know? Like, that made mm. me want to have fun too. So it's not just about uh, going to work. No, I'm you're here to have fun. Right. And, and plus, do also do your work. But... Dude, that was the most fun I've ever had, to be honest. Really? The yeah. The pi the pinata. I think the internet, like, say, it's <laughs> called, it was called Penelope. I don't Penelope. recall it being. Oh, wait, that's a real. That was the real name, was it? Yeah, Penelope. Oh, oh there we go. That name. 
That's hilarious. Yeah. Do you still keep in touch with her? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I see her at Walmart every now and then. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's go. true. That's <laughs> yeah. That, like, so when, so, because I believe Lindsay and Grand Matalit, they came in after you, right? During that whole yeah. cruiserweight classic stuff. When, so, when, so you're in WWE, there's not many cruiserweights or small guys. So you're kind of one in your own, you're a high flyer. And then WWE says, oh, we're going to do this cruiserweight show and we're going to have a cruiserweight division. At the time when you saw that, were you like excited by that? Were you like worried? Like, oh no, there's more loot, like, or more high flyers. Like, how did you feel about that thing? I was pitching right away to be a part of it, man. Really? Yeah. Oh my God, dude. I, dude, because at the time, yes, I was wrestling here and there, but I mean, I wasn't doing anything. I'm like, I want to be part of the cruiserweights. Yeah. Dude, I was pitching and pitching and waiting and just trying to get an opportunity to be, when is the right time for me to show up? I'm like, man. So finally, all of a sudden, when the opportunity came, it's like, oh, oh, I got this time to get ready. I'm like, oh man, I like, like quickly, I just had a you know, uh, think of what type of, what's the perfect mask for me to debut? Like, what can I do? And uh, yeah, man, it was, it was just, uh, it was pretty cool and exciting that I got to be a part of it, to be honest. But I wanted to be a part of it since the beginning. Since the beginning? Yeah, man. But I, I thought it was pretty cool. So, so I cool. feel like as a cruiserweight, you know, I feel like you had a very successful WWE career. Like how, like, you won the United States title, right? Quite a few times. Like, yeah, what did, what did that mean to you? To you, was that like a, a big deal? Because I assume, yeah. I assume it was. But how was that for you? Oh my god, dude! Like, because I didn't, I didn't know who was gonna win. Like, literally, like right before curtain. So it hit me afterwards. Like legit, like looking at my title, I'm like, man, I can't believe this happened. Like, it's just, it felt surreal. Because, yeah. uh. It just what happened real quick. Who did you sudden, beat for it? Was it Del Rio or? Yeah, with Del Rio. Man, yeah. he took me. Man, it, it, it was cool and nerve wracking and cool. Because <laughs> we, uh, we had two segments and we only had the little bit of, of my comeback and the finish. Um, I, I think we didn't know who was up first or whatever, who's going to be up. So we called it all in the ring, and man, it was like a test to, to see if I could hang with the boys, man. I'm like, so once I was told that, I'm like, all right, uh, <laughs> no pressure, right? So dude, I thought it was pretty cool a moment that even I surprised myself, like, man, I didn't know I can uh, wrestle at this level, and I learned so much on the fly right there. And man, dude, uh, just sure. feeling that feeling there and that feeling of, uh, of their even the real telling Vince in front of me, like, man, th this kid is ready, you know, like give him something. This kid's ready. I'm like, man, wow. it's wow. like, to me, it's like surreal, dude. Like I, my, I'm so, I'm so dumb because I was so emotional. I took off my mask. I'm like, Oh my God. I'm so like, I'm so happy. I'm like, Oh dude, they were supposed to record me, but I took <laughs> off my mask, but and I'm all emotional. And then I put it after I'm done crying. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> oh, man, sorry. I'm like, yeah i forgot about that i'm like all right. uh, well it was a real but, moment for you huh? it, it so. is, and it felt real and to me because I, I needed to breathe i'm like and yeah. i needed to feel that i am here and i'm seeing this i'm like wow and i'm and, and, and like me normally i just took off my mask i'm like no nah. <laughs> it's just uh again uh the moment was given to me there mm -hmm. and then and i and i took it and it was either a hit or a miss. And man, dude, it was a hit, dude. And right. I did everything it took, whatever it took, man. We hit each other hard. And the reel's like a really awesome worker, but man, he hits hard too. He's so tough. Yeah, I've wrestled he's, him a few times. He's he's a tough man. guy. <laughs> but like he brought the toughness out of me too that mm. I didn't I didn't even know I had. So I'm like, oh, okay. So it's just like a little fire in me, you know, like from there it's just Oh, I can do this, man. I can keep going. Sheamus is like that too, man. Russo. Oh boy, yeah. Man, it's, like, <laughs> it's so cool. Like it, it's that it's that pretty cool moment. Like man, like when you hit each other, boom! Like that that macho, you know? Yeah, feels. yeah. But uh, <laughs> again, that moment was pretty cool, and it, it was so surreal. Like not even my wife knew or anything. I just at the time, I just say like, oh, I have I have a match today. 
a match tonight. Oh, I'm not wrestling tonight or something. Yeah. So I should say match today. I didn't even know what was going to happen until like right before curtain. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Okay. That's so so cool. I guess I am. <laughs> Dude, and so it's funny you're talking about this because uh, I've only ever been to one WrestleMania and it was a WrestleMania in Dallas because mm-hmm. one of my friends was getting married and he wanted his like bachelor party to be at WrestleMania. And I was already in um, town because I was doing all the indie shows. And I came mm-hmm. into WrestleMania and for whatever reason in Dallas, I believe it was Dallas. Tell me if I'm getting this memory right. But mm-hmm. there was an issue with trying to get everyone into the building. Like, I don't know why, oh. but they, yeah. And then I came in and then you were wrestling Ryback, back, right back. Um, yeah. but like only like half the audience had managed to come in already. And I was like, uh, I just remember seeing uh, you because oh, obviously oh. I know you. And I was like, holy crap. I was like, this is super awesome that my friends like wrestling in a stadium of at WrestleMania. Okay. But I was like, God damn, why are there not the fans on here? How annoying. Do you remember that? Man. Yeah, dude. Oh, dude, <laughs> it was my first WrestleMania. I'm defending the US title against Ryback. Uh, we were third on the on the show. Mm. Then we got moved to first. <sighs> then we got moved to kickoff. Ah. So I'm like, oh, and my wife uh, at the time she was at the the family bus, and that family bus didn't make it on time because of traffic or something. No. And, yeah, dude. So my wife didn't even get to see my first wrestlemania match moment oh and i'm sorry that she got sucks. there man dude, she got there when uh i just raised my hand and i just exited right away oh, like right no. there then so it was like really hard for her and and me too i thought i thought she was there but i was you know i was just focused on the match but uh dude like when she told me that she kept calling at the time uh no family was allowed because i think there were some strict rules and stuff because it was a huge stadium so sure i told the uh, uh office the uh my situation like hey i my wife didn't make it to my match you know can you at least do me a favor bring my wife in the back <laughs> so yeah <laughs> they did and they did and they went uh they went in front and went to go get her she was the only one in the back you know and uh uh at least i mean they did that i'm like all right well come on man i mean it's just it's just it was it was it was looked really uh sad that like the bus you know didn't work out but uh just her being there at the time and taking our picture afterwards okay but she didn't see it she wasn't there she wanted to be there you know having that moment too you know but uh that's her dream too just you know hey you know we worked our butt off you know right like everything we went through yeah just having that little moment but we never got you know but uh hey you know never say never right so well is it, i was gonna always say do you, do you look back at that moment then is it like bittersweet you look back at it as like a positive memory because it's still your first wrestlemania or because of the situation like a negative memory or how no um actually now i see it as a it happened i know it could uh i know there's gonna be a better moment right mm-hmm. you know yeah so that's how i see it like i mean you did more than one wrestlemania right or was that the only one i did a couple but it was mostly like battle royals after gotcha. that mm, yeah gotcha. really... but, but it seems like you i mean you're in WWE for a good amount of years you had a lot yeah. of merchandise a lot of action figures a lot of video games um oh yeah like you, you i would say you were a big overachiever i think i think you did really really great personally Oh man, thank you, man. I, I, you know, I, I just, you know how we are, bro. We're like we're perfectionists. We don't feel like, like it's like I haven't done enough. I want to keep going, you know. I right. Never feel that comfort. That's a problem, so that's though. Do you saying. not? Do you not feel like that? And I feel like we're wrestlers. You know, I help train a lot of wrestlers, and obviously we've got a lot of friends that are wrestlers, and it just yeah. with wrestlers, it feels like your fishbowl is always getting bigger. And wrestlers oh, yeah. are just never happy. And you could be like, I've got friends who are multi-millionaires and have been the world champion, but then they can still get to a point where they're not happy. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah. that's a oh, real yeah. problem for wrestlers. I think you always want more, huh? Exactly. I mean, I, again, uh, all I can do, all I can do right now, like just, just go, go, just go with the flow, you know, for now. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, focus on my health. That's my main thing. I'm always yes. focusing on my health. Trying yes. to stay healthy and again, 
trying to live a long, healthy lifestyle. Uh, now that I'm traveling a lot more too, so it just makes it a little difficult, you know, staying healthy because of the food. But uh, on top of that, I mean, again, I I just try not to stress out too much anymore. Uh, I try to always stay positive and uh, just always, man, uh, always think, you know, good positive vibes, you know. <laughs> Dude, like you, you have any products that help you relax or not stress out? Yes, uh, right now we'll, we still have our, <laughs> well, we still have our CBD products that uh, we put on hold for now because we're turning it into a wellness, and uh, we're turning it more into a uh, mushroom-based, uh, like lion's made and stuff like the good oh, stuff wow. like that. Really? Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, we're yeah, that's on the works right now. But I still have my CBD every now and then when I can't sleep, I just take my CBD or. Uh, if not, it's funny. You might think I'm crazy. If not, I work out. If I can't sleep, I go work out. <laughs> so I just go, dude. It's just like a, a good stress reliever for me. Like if I'm thinking too much, I'm like, I'm just, I'm just gonna go get a quick workout. I 100 yeah. uh, agree with uh, working out. Like for me personally, yeah. if I'm feeling stressed, which is the yeah. majority of the times, my things I like to do. I like to exercise. I like to get sun. I like to eat oh, healthy yeah. and just try and eliminate like neg- or read even try and negative, like yeah. get rid of negative stuff. Like I don't want to be scrolling on social media too much. I don't drink Same. alcohol, anything like that. I'm just not interested. You know, awesome. I just now, now I'm older. I oh. just, I just want to feel good. You know? <laughs> Same. Oh dude. Same. <laughs> it's funny. Like now that I'm older. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. When you're younger, you want to do everything, I, I, you know, but yeah. And sometimes I just like staying home too. Like when oh. I have free time, I just want to stay home. <laughs> All the time for me. I always just want to be oh, home. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I wanted to take a minute to talk about our newest sponsor, madcatbeardcare.com. Myself, I have a beard. Sam, you have a beard. Beards are very popular now, but you've got to take care of your beard. you got to get yourself over to madcatbeardcare.com. I'm looking at the oils and the balms on there. First of all, they're all designed by different pro wrestlers and marketed as different pro wrestlers. So there's a bunch of guys involved with this, like Matt Cardona, Brian Myers, Delirious, Jay Lethal, a whole collection of awesome wrestlers that have their own product on madcatbeardcare.com. Not only that, but a portion of the profits go to cat rescues around the country. So I think that's already exciting. But the beard oils and the balms both are made from organic argan oil, jojoba and vitamin E, which when combined helps to soften, strengthen and vitalize and stimulate circulation in the face, nourishing and strengthening the hair follicles to assist growth. Now, this is what you need. If you've got a patchy beard, you need to get yourself to Mad Cat Beard Care Com. The balms also include the same oil and mixture as the oils, but he adds the sheer butter, which helps alleviate itch and irritation to your face, while also helping control pesky stray hairs by allowing you to style them into place. He uses local organic beeswax that helps to get more of a hold to your style. So you got to look after your skin underneath your beard, just like you do your scalp. Like these aren't things that you can neglect. And that's why we've teamed up with madcatbeercare.com. And right now, just for listening to the show, you can get yourself a whopping 15% off products at madcatbeercare.com by using the code villain. That's 15% for the promo code villain. That's V I L L A I. And pick yourself up the villain's curse, my own beard oil, my own beard balm. That's exactly what I use every day on my face to make my famous beard look beautiful. You can do the same thing too. So last time I'm going to say it, get yourself over now to madcatbeardcare.com. Promo villain. Here's a question, um, buddy. Like, yeah. I don't know. What, what should I t- refer to you as? Because like, I normally call you by your shoot name, but I don't know if I want to do that one. <laughs> yeah, you can call me Manny. Okay, whatever. cool. I didn't know if you're protective of it. Um, right. So a few more, a few more questions. I don't want to take up too much of your time, and you've oh, been no, please, fantastic. Please, um, the, in terms of um, obviously, you wrestled for years outside of WWE, then in WWE, and then you've had this run since then. 
What would you say were some of your favorite matches that you've had along your career? Because one that always comes to mind with you is your stuff with El Generico, like the few matches you had with him, oh, the matches. That sticks out to me. Dude, uh, before WWE, yes, I, I, I agree. El Generico, man, he, it's because he, he took me to another level. Like, again, he, he, he kind of reminded me of the real, for that version, in Lucha Libre, kind of, uh, dude, he, he was in another level, man, too. Like, he, like, I, I love when someone says, hey, you think you can do this? I've never done it, but I know I can do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, little things like that I love, man. Uh, in Chicago, too, I work a lot, a lot with Gringo Loco. Yeah, uh, he's great, huh? He's getting a bit of a break now. Oh, yeah, dude. I'm glad he's getting his break right now because he's long overdue. He, he's been around man, that long? He, I had no idea. Yeah, dude. Like, he started he's pretty much with me, too. I mean, really? he, he was there before me. I think he was there before me, like, maybe two years before me. Wow. So, yeah, dude, I met him in Chicago and, like, like doing Lucha Libre with this other small guy. I'm like, man, I want to learn that. Yeah. So, and then I started working with him. And, dude, we again, and we feuded in Chicago and – and we had a couple matches here and there uh, around uh, outside of Chicago. But other than that, dude, I'm just glad he's breaking out. And yeah, he's really talented, man. Really, really he's, talented. he's super talented. Yeah, I, I, I haven't had the chance to wrestle him, but I'd love to because he's he's pretty incredible in there. Um, <laughs> so that's that's another guy too. I I had great matches with, but I'm sure also too, you know, Generico, uh, Swan, Sammy Callahan too. Like working with him, yeah. Um, Working uh, Ricochet, Swan, and PWG. Absolutely. Uh, with AR Fox is another guy, uh, great, great wrestler. Underrated and, guy, huh? King. Oh man, in CCW, my my debut with uh with him was was uh yeah was with AR Fox. Yeah. And um, yeah, man. Uh, I mean, there's so many matches too. Uh, one so, favorite. Wait, one. Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say just um. <clears throat> Who? What were your standout moments? You think matches wise in the WWE, and, and who did you like to work with across sort of WWE and NXT? Was there anyone that stood out to you, or? Oh, in uh, NXT, yeah, I would say uh, Buddy Murphy and his his other tag partner. Oh, God, I'm having a blank right now. Wesley Blake, uh, I think. Wesley Blake, yes, man, a great guy, <laughs> awesome dude. Yeah, dude, I love working them. Man, we did some, we did awesome stuff at the time. Me and uh, Buddy Murphy and NXT, uh, we used to do crazy like spots and stuff, and we we weren't allowed to do stuff like that at the time. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. We just had to <laughs> down a little bit, so we couldn't do anything cool, you know. Uh, but we got away with a couple of things, and man, it was just so fun working with them. And and then too, they're like, man, they click. They click so well together. Another, I mean, the ascension, the ascension too. Working them, those guys are great, huh? Working them the NXT, yeah, they're great. Their entrance were awesome, dude. I always rocked out to it. I'm like, man, that's cool. <laughs> I, it's I so was cool, really. It, it's a such a shame game. that those guys. Such a shame those guys didn't get much of a a better run on the main roster because I always thought they yeah, were um, phenomenal. You know. We we've we feuded and wrestled all over the world. I think legit for a straight year, nonstop. Wow. And and they, I think uh, Ascension even said like, "Man, is this a rib or what?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> like what the hell? You know, we we're always wrestling together the whole year. That's but, so uh, funny. It was so fun. It was so fun working with them too. Um, oh man, in WWE too again, uh, Buddy Murphy working them in Two Hundred Five Live. Oh man, I do. We just flow, man. We just read each other's bodies, man, in the ring. Like it, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool, man. We, you know, you know when you have like that connection with someone in the ring, you know, you can flow without thinking, man. Right? Yes. Read each other's bodies and stuff. Like you don't even have to like think. You just feel. But that was with with uh, Buddy Murphy at the time. Uh, Roderick Strong. I had a great match with him too, man. Oh. Man, uh, there's so many. There's so many. Um, <laughs> right back. I love working right back. Believe it or not, man. Everybody tells me, "Are you? Do you love working right back?" I'm like, oh man, that was one of my favorite matches. Really? You enjoyed working yeah. right back? Yeah, man. It was so cool because at the time he's like, "Fuck it, let's do everything." All right, cool. <laughs> let's do it, dog. I'm like, all right. So That's hilarious. It fun. It was just so fun working with him and uh, dude, man. He dude, he can go. I'm like, man. All right, cool. Like. 
just it was just so fun. He's a big work. guy as well. <laughs> oh man, mm-hmm. hell yeah, dude, big dude, strong, and just the fact the flow that we have, our the rhythm was there, man. We connected so much. It was pretty cool. What about this? So uh, cool did, I remember seeing footage. You had like a TLC match, I want to say, with the, oh, uh, the Usos, the New Day. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my finish off the top rope. Yeah. Salida del Sol. How was oh, that? Man. Scary? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it, it was funny because uh, Dean Malenko was our producer at the time and uh, for the match. And uh, he was making sure everybody you know like is safe making sure the whole match is going great but uh i told him the idea i had a plan a and plan b in my head but i didn't think he heard me <laughs> so i'm like man i don't know if i should do it or something and and it was with uh it was with jimmy or jay i believe um but yeah dude uh we actually decided up there and i'm like man should i do it should i do it he's like He's like, fucking do it, who? So I'm like, oh man, that's so cool of you, dog. Are you sure that's so badass? So, so yeah, he's like, man, just do it. Because at the time, we weren't allowed to do anything cool because right. uh, they were saving, they were saving something bigger for the main event. And I'm like, man, we can't do anything cool. We have a ladder match. Like, come on. <laughs> so we all decided, and we just, all right, all right, man, we're all in this together. So it was one of those moments. Hey, uh, if we all, if one goes, we all go. Kind of moment, you know. And that's what I felt. So it was pretty cool. Like everybody, everybody shined really well, man. But just that moment I asked for, I'm like, well, um, to, oh, because we were actually, we were, we were supposed to win. And if we won, really? I wouldn't have done it. Yeah. If we won, I wouldn't have done it. That was what I was thinking. If we didn't win, I was going to do it. Wow. Really? <laughs> that that's funny. Too. Yeah. <laughs> but you wanted to, so you I'm wanted a moment to be remembered, right? Yeah, I'm like, you know what? I'm not winning the titles because uh, we found out right before curtain. Oh, really? Like, hey, yeah, Lucha Dragons. I'm like, oh man, all right, cool. We have to go up and tell everybody in there that we're we're going under now. That's so yeah, like, yeah. All right, cool. Damn. So we had to change everything. We had to change the finish too on on uh, in the ring too. Oh, geez, but, really? And everybody, yeah, everybody, everybody works really well, man. Like we all connected really well, man. Everybody had fun. Man, at the end, like we were all just laughing and like, man, this is so fun, so cool. And nobody got hurt. And once I did that move, um, because it was a big no no, I wasn't supposed to do nothing. I said, man, fuck it. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, it was one of those things. Did you get in and trouble? I did. It was one of those things. If I would have got hurt, I would have gotten in trouble. If I didn't, yeah. uh, then all uh, Ben says, like, man, you're fucking crazy. <laughs> like, <"Well, laughs> hey, man. You- I'm a little crazy, kind of like, all right. I guess that's a but, compliment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, man. That's funny. Do you, um, oh. So, Manny, um, you're a bit of an entrepreneur. What sort of, uh, what have you got going on at the moment? Like, where, let's plug all your um, your social medias or anything that you want to promote at the moment. Like, what's going on with you right now that you want to get out there to the Chilling with the Villain listeners? Well, right now, I'm promoting myself. I'm getting back in the ring, and I'm putting my CBD at Candela, Candela mm. Labs, Instagram. I'm putting it on hold. Why? Because it's becoming a wellness. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come out with more information coming soon. But in the meantime, you can follow me at Samurai del Sol as, with a Y, Samurai del Sol on Instagram and uh, on Twitter or X now that it's called yeah at gloat so you can just follow me at gloat now so I, it's so weird to call x right <laughs> so yeah i anyways. that doesn't sound right does it still well i think the yeah. thing is people and, uh, it's stupid because people put x then he put forward slash twitter do you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> like, x yeah, formerly twitter I don't know, it's so yeah weird. and um and two I'll, I'll be having merch in the on my website at some uh it's gonna be at samurai doso.com with a y samurai doso why with a Y? Because there's many samurais out there. I want to be different. I want to spell mm-hmm. it with a Y. Samurai, I'm, all about, I'm all about being different. That's all. Standing awesome. out. <laughs> just uh, before we go, I just got one last question. Um, yes, man. Oh, yeah. We spoke We spoke about, you know, uh, stuff that we're great, grateful for and just kind of like appreciating our time and everything else. Like, what are you right now? Just the top of your head, like what are you grateful for uh, right now? 
you know, on this, what day is it? Wednesday in April. Um, like, what are you grateful for in life? Well, I'm grateful to have my wife here with me and uh, grateful that we're both healthy. I'm grateful to be alive, to be honest. Uh, I mean, with throughout my whole experience that one day, one day I will want to write my book and becoming the gloat, becoming the greatest lucha of, of all time. It's the greatest fight, basically talking about my life. And uh, I'm just grateful for everything and the opportunities uh, that I have, uh, the opportunities to still travel, the opportunities to still wrestle. So many times I've been, I wanted to retire so many times, but mm -hmm. I kid you not, when I see kids, they lucha lucha for me, like, man, I, I, I can't let you down. So, all right, let me keep <laughs> going. And th th I mean, because I feel I'm, I'm, that's my reason to be on this earth. I'm here to entertain. I'm here to give back, you know. Uh, I'm here to help out many kids that don't know how to, uh, like how to be a wrestler, how to be a luchador, like what are the steps? Like they don't know, they don't know the steps. They're not taught that. So right. that that's where I come in and wherever I go and I teach that and I show them that and I, and I help them with that as much as I can do, you know? So that's, to me, that's what I'm grateful for that I have that opportunity to give back. And again, because throughout my life experiences and my near death near death experiences, yeah. everything that I've been through, man, I'm just grateful to to be back and uh, hopefully, hopefully, I mean, still working my butt off to one day be back, you know, or still again keep wrestling and give back, give back. Absolutely. And I'm grateful for that. I'm well, grateful for that, man. We're very, we're very grateful for you, and it seems oh, yeah. like grateful for Thank you coming you, on the show. Um, Today, Thanks, it seems like we got like a little snippet of that life story. But uh, when you do decide to bring out that book, The Great Suit of All Time, oh, I will, I will, I'm uh, a big reader, so I'll definitely love to read that. Oh, and um, I'm hoping eventually you and I get this rematch that we're after uh, eventually. Yeah, so dude, that'd be awesome. Yes. Any promoters are yes. listening, uh, myself and uh, Manny here, Kalisto, Samurai Dosso, are available for bookings. So. <laughs> Hit us up, yeah. make it happen. Around the world, guys. <laughs> absolutely. But it. honestly, buddy, you've been absolutely so great today. And I don't want to take up any more of your time. Sorry, Sam, no, you got no, something no, to say? Man. I've got yeah. I love I love talking to you. I sometimes I even uh, get yelled at too because I talk a lot. I even spend dude in my seminars instead of three hours, I, I spend five or six hours. Oh dude, yeah. Go I'm the make, same. <laughs> I, I just dude, I just get passionate. You know how it is, dude? I yeah. I'm the same. I'm uh, sorry, sorry, Sam, what you're saying? Well, you, your last question was so nice, and Manny, you answered it so well that I almost like thought, oh, I'm not going to ask my last question because it's so silly. But I've got to say, you've been in a lot of, you've been in a quite a few video games right now because you've you were in like WWE 2K like 2016 to 2020 and then 2022. Let's ignore those. That was the last, yeah, because they took a year off. Let's ignore those. One of my guilty pleasures is the game WWE 2K Battlegrounds, which everybody hates. And oh. my memory, like one of my memories is like, I always picked you in this game okay. called 2K Battlegrounds, which everybody <laughs> hates. Yeah. Like, have you played that game? <laughs> I've actually, let me see, hold on. I think I got it right here. Oh, oh that's awesome. <laughs> that's so funny. Yet. Yeah, let's see it. Come on. There we there go. It is. It. <laughs> there it is. People act like that game is Crush Hour, but it's not. It's Why? so much fun. I mean, I, I don't know. videos of it, like... It looks pretty cool. I mean, it is pretty cool because I come out of it. <laughs> but uh, I mean, uh, I I played it a little bit. I I think I have to play the story mode to see myself. So I'm like, I gave up on. Yeah. Like, oh man. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. Too impatient. That's hilarious. That's so pick funny. it up. I've never never played that. We'll have so to funny. play it, Marty. It's we great. will. We'll play yeah, it. Stream dude, it. Dude, I got it here on Xbox. What? Why are you taking? Xbox. Oh, well, there you go. Why are you taking stuff off of your shelf? What is that Exorcist thing right at the top? I can take you a horror fan. Oh, it's dude. like, a, what is that? So my friend, uh, Linda Blair, sent me that. Oh, no way. That's awesome. So there we go. Yeah. It That's was through, amazing. Uh, Fluffy. You know, you know Gabriel Iglesias? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Oh, of course. Yeah. Fluffy, yeah, the comedian. A, yeah. Yeah. He's a That's good awesome. friend of mine. So it was, it was given to him through me, like to give to me. That's yeah. amazing. And uh, yeah, That's dude, I'm really a big horror cool. movie fan. So. That's amazing. So cool. <laughs> you've got it all. Well, listen. Yeah, I got a uh, bunch of turkey. That's, you've got it all, brother. I love yeah. it. So, uh, but listen, buddy, unfortunately, 
that's all we've got time for. But yes, Manny, uh, thank you so much again for coming thank on the you. show. Really appreciate you. Thank you for being so uh, sharing and open with your time. And uh, I feel like a lot of people can listen to this podcast and I feel like you are going to help people. I feel like there's a good chance you can inspire people. And uh, I think what you're doing is great. So thank you so much, brother. And I hope that I see you down the road soon. And I'm sure I will. Yes, definitely, man. I hope so too, bro. God bless. Awesome. Brother. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Amazing. Thanks. Cheers, boss. Bye-bye. So there we have it. That was part two of our interview with Carlisto. Uh, he didn't do the heel turn on you, no. Sam. No. He... In fact, it was very nice. He even um, entertained me with the horror and the video games. It, it's funny. I don't believe. I wonder if he's ever actually played heel. That Probably would have been a good question. Maybe we should uh, do a Maybe part we should, three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I doubt he's played heel because you get those characters sometimes in wrestling. Guys like Ricky Steamboat, guys like Rey Mysterio, who just, for you whatever just can't reason, feel it. Yeah. can't see them as a heel. And I feel <laughs> like Jeff Hardy tried many times to play heel and just couldn't, people just want to want to cheer him, huh? So yeah, and I feel I like Kelly's one of those yeah. falls into that bracket. But yeah, uh, we hope you enjoyed that. We really did. And if you did, let us know and we will try and get more guests on the show. Uh, we, like I said, we'd like to mix things up on the show from time to time. So let us know. And if you do want some more guests, let us know what guests. There's no promises here, but we're open for suggestions. Um, if you enjoyed the show, please follow us on the social media at The Villain Pod. We're on uh, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. And if you really enjoy the show, please leave us a five star review. And if you do, we'll read it out on the show and we'll give you a shout out. And that would really help us out with the algorithm. But I think that's all it from me. Sam, I'll leave yes. it to you. Yes. Thank you very much for listening to part two. And thank you very much to Callisto for your time. Wonderful guy. Wonderful. Yes. Guest. Great guy. That's all I have to say. So have a good week. Till next week. 